What's up, everybody? Good late morning. Hope you guys are doing well as this day goes on. We are getting closer to the weekend full of football. And I'm going to talk about something in this video I usually don't talk about on this channel. Now, this does pertain to the Seahawks, but it doesn't pertain to the present Seahawks or the future Seahawks. Those are the things I like to talk about on this channel. I don't usually talk about the past Seahawks that much because... It's not that interesting, right? The past is the past. It's already happened. It can't be changed. And I um, I just don't feel the need to belabor that. I mean, how much could you really talk about the Seahawks past anyway? But I think this warrants a video because, really, I don't talk about it that much. But the Seattle Seahawks past, the recent past, that's a pretty good place to be, right? Like, I'm not saying that you could make video after video after video talking about it at this point, because it's all done, it's already happened, but 10 to 12 years ago, the Seattle Seahawks, they had a very special team. They had, for a while, the best team in the league. They had a team that nobody wanted to play, a team that could beat anybody, a team that could blow out anybody. They had the best roster in the league. They had players like Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman... K.J. Wright, Bobby Wagner, Russell Wilson, Doug Baldwin, and the two guys we're going to really talk about in this video, Marshawn Lynch and Earl Thomas. And I could go further down the list. I could go down to guys like Bruce Irvin or, or Cliff Averill or Russell Okung or Jermaine Curse, but um, <clears throat> I think you guys get my point. That was a special team that if you were alive and aware of your surroundings enough to be aware of what the team was doing, that team means a lot to you. And we've got something going on with two members of that team from, um, from that great Seahawks era, Earl Thomas and Marshawn Lynch. And I made a video discussing this a few months ago when it was initially announced, but we have an update. So quick recap of the situation. The NFL Hall of Fame every year puts together a list of players that they are considering as candidates to make the Hall of Fame that year. And a couple of times throughout the year, they will trim out a bunch of those players that they don't think should make the Hall that year. And by the end of the process, they have a list, I think it's usually about five or six players long, that they feel like should get in. And those are the players that get in. Everyone who doesn't get in makes the list most of the time the next year. Maybe they make it, maybe they don't, but that's how the process works. So earlier this year, the Hall of Fame released their initial list, <clears throat> and Earl Thomas and Marshawn Lynch were both on it. Now they've done a cut down to 25 players, 25, and Earl Thomas made the final 25, Marshawn Lynch did not. So we're going one of two here. So first of all, let me talk about Marshawn for a second. Well, actually, first, let me also say there was another Seahawk that didn't make the semifinal list. It was, um, it was a Sean Alexander. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. I think Sean Alexander should be in the Hall of Fame eventually. He won an MVP. He's got over 100 regular season touchdowns. He played in a Super Bowl. I, I don't know why he's not in there, but that's not really what this video is about. This video is about Earl Thomas and Marshawn Lynch, because these are two guys that have only recently become eligible to make the Hall of Fame, right? Sean Alexander has been eligible for a while and hasn't gotten in. He may never get in, and it just is what it is. So that's not really what this video is about. This video is about Earl and Marshawn. Now, I want to say real quick, just talking about Marshawn for a little bit, because I also think that Marshawn should probably make the Hall of Fame. The criteria that I've always used here is Edger and James is in the Hall of Fame. I think Marshawn Lynch should be in the Hall of Fame if Edger and James is in, right? Marshawn Lynch won a Super Bowl and played in another. Edger and James only ever played in a Super Bowl. Edger and James has better regular season production because he played longer, but Marshawn Lynch is one of the greatest playoff performers of all time at the position. Um, I don't know. To me, Marshawn Lynch should get in. I am I actually looked at the list of players that have made the final 25 this year. 
from Bleacher Report, this article here, they list out all 25 players that have made the uh, semifinal cut. And Fred Taylor is here. And Fred Taylor was a great player, don't get me wrong. But Fred Taylor making the Hall of Fame over Marshawn Lynch, I that, that doesn't seem right to me. And maybe there will be a Jacksonville Jaguars fan down there that'll tell me, oh, I'm completely wrong. Fred Taylor was, you know, the greatest thing since Earl Campbell. But I remember Fred Taylor. He was a very good player. He had a very good career. But I don't see how Fred Taylor takes priority in the Hall of Fame over Marshawn Lynch. So I'm not saying that Fred Taylor should make the Hall of Fame and therefore I think Marshawn should make it. I'm sure Fred Taylor won't. But the fact that Fred Taylor made it to the semifinals and Marshawn didn't, I you know, I, I have to disagree a little bit with that one. I, I that, that one, I don't know, it doesn't pass the smell test to me. Now, let's talk about Earl Thomas a little bit here because I'm looking at this list and I know that the NFL Hall of Fame will typically end up putting in about six players a year. And looking at this list, I think that the standouts would be Antonio Gates. I think Gates needs to get in. Um, I would put Rodney Harrison in. Uh, Rodney Harrison, I think, invented the 30-30 club. He won multiple Super Bowls. He was considered the most he he was considered the most dangerous safety of his era. I think I want to put Tory Holt in. I know that it's just a lot of counting stats, but to me. Torrey Holt should probably get in. The numbers he put up over his career were pretty phenomenal. I think you got to put Eli Manning in, even though he he as a player doesn't really he doesn't really deserve to be in as a player, but as a career he does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and say get him in there, get it over with. A two time Super Bowl MVP is going to make the Hall of Fame. May as well do it now. And then I think. I think Vinatieri should go in. I do. There's only one kicker in the Hall of Fame, to my knowledge, off the top of my head. Um, I think Vinatieri should join him. And then after that, I'm looking at the rest of this list. That, that I got, I got five players there. I don't think anybody else on this list stands out as much as Earl Thomas does. So if this is the list of finalists, then I'm thinking Earl Thomas should make it this year. And if he doesn't make it this year, maybe you end up putting in somebody like, uh, you know, a Reggie Wayne who had great numbers or even a Steve Smith senior. I would kind of understand that Steve Smith, phenomenal, phenomenal player, all timer for sure. Or even I think James Harrison won defensive player of the year once. Maybe you want to put him in there instead. OK, I don't know if I would agree, but I get it. But at some point in the next couple years, if you're just looking at the player, Earl Thomas should get in. Now, if you want to look at Earl Thomas, the player, and the person, maybe not. But I don't know how much the NFL Hall of Fame is going to take that stuff into consideration. I, I mean, if you're going to play that game, if you're going to mess around with that kind of stuff, then there are probably some other players on this list or who are already in the Hall of Fame who probably shouldn't make it either. So, understand with Earl Thomas that the stats will never do justice how good he was. And it is on the NFL to understand that his value transcended any statistic or any number that you could put out there for this player. And even with that being said, I mean, look at these numbers, right? This guy made the Pro Bowl seven times. He made All-Pro first team three times. He made All-Pro second team twice. He has 30 career interceptions as a safety in the modern NFL, right? This isn't the old days when you had players get, you know, 14 interceptions in a season. This isn't the old days when you would have a bunch of players get double-digit interceptions in a season and it wasn't even that big of a deal. This is a guy who has, a, you know, 12 forced fumbles. This is a guy who was extremely durable for most of his career he only started missing games right near the end and he even managed to keep up his level of success and ability to play 
as he went to another team in the final year of his career. He made the Pro Bowl with the Ravens in 2019. So he was able to maintain his ability even on a different team. So you can't say he was just a product of Pete Carroll or a product of the Legion of Boom. No, he proved he could do it in another situation. And he even proved that he could do it playing a different position because the Ravens moved him around. The Ravens would play him at strong safety. The Ravens would send him on blitzes, which we almost never did. So he found a completely different way to be a very good player in Baltimore in 2019. And again, these numbers don't even really begin to tell the story. Earl Thomas took away so much of what other teams tried to do when they attacked deep downfield. You couldn't attack deep down the field against the Seahawks. And it wasn't because they would drop three guys back there. It was because they would drop one guy back there, and that one guy covered ground so well and read play so well that you just didn't want to even test him. You would have been foolish to test him. It would have been dumb to test him. The Pro Football Hall of Fame has already put Earl Thomas on their all-decade team for the 2010s. If you scroll down here to the defense, you will see that they have basically four safeties. Eric Berry, Eric Weddle, Earl Thomas, and Honey Badger. And Eric Berry played less than 90 games, and Honey Badger played less than 100 games in that period of time. So, really, you're talking about Weddle and Thomas as being the best safeties of their decade. And between Eric Weddle and Earl Thomas, I know who I'm taking. So, really, when you boil it down, I don't think there's much of an argument to make in a different direction. Earl Thomas was the best safety of his decade. If you don't put him in, what you're saying is no safeties that played the majority of their career in the 2010s should go in. And that doesn't seem right. So, yeah, what I'm trying to say is I think Earl should get in here. Now, there, the stuff that happened after his retirement or the stuff that forced his retirement, because the thing with Earl and the thing that is a little bit frustrating here he would have played longer, probably significantly longer, if not for the stupid stuff he did off the field. And if the NFL Hall of Fame says we're not going to put him in because he disgraced himself after leaving the NFL, and I, I don't think that stuff is overhyped. I want to be clear. I don't think that people are just making a big deal out of nothing with that. I think that's legitimate. The stuff he did after he left the NFL and right before he left the NFL, was terrible. And if the Hall of Fame decides we're just not going to honor somebody who does stuff like that, then okay, I, I can respect that. But if you're just looking at the player, Earl Thomas, to me, was our best player on the team that won the Super Bowl. I think that he did his job better than anybody else did his job on the team. Maybe... Maybe you could spin up an argument for a guy like a Bobby Wagner, but to me, what Earl did on the Super Bowl winning Seahawks and the team that was the number one defense in the league for four straight seasons was almost impossible to replace. Like Quandre Diggs came along after Earl Thomas, and Quandre Diggs was great, but he wasn't Earl. He wasn't even that close to Earl. So. That's a guy who made the Pro Bowl for us a couple times, by the way. That's a guy who put up great numbers and did great things here, but he was an Earl. And there will never be another Earl in Seattle, I don't think. You don't get safeties that good that often. So, Earl Thomas was my favorite player when he was here. He was. He was my favorite player on that great Seahawks team. He was the guy that I identified as being the guy who does his job better than anyone else does their job. So, I'm hoping that he gets in ultimately. I, I know that there are some hard feelings. I know he acted poorly on his way out of Seattle, and he certainly acted poorly on his way out of the league. But if we're just going to honor players here, and for sure the NFL has put many players in their Hall of Fame that were not good people off the field, that did a lot of bad things off the field, I, I don't know why this should be any different. So, yeah, I'm, I'm saying that Earl Thomas deserves the Hall of Fame as a player. Get him in there. 
And I think that he should get in this year if you look at this list. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks.